Hi, this is Father Trey Nelson at St. Jude the Apostle Catholic Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, with a brief homily for Pentecost Sunday, 2020. You know, before I say anything, I think we should kind of just mention the obvious. I had worked on and prepared my homily for this Sunday early in the week, and then all of a sudden we had new events going on in our nation. Not new necessarily, but really intense stuff in the news. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're already talking about hurricane season. And now if you look at the news, obviously, you see demonstrating and rioting in different places in our country. Philadelphia, Los Angeles, Minnesota, even here in Louisiana, we're just hoping and praying that that kind of stuff doesn't really happen. Peaceful protesting is one thing, but violence and stealing and looting, that's totally different. So if you're like me, you're probably worried perhaps angry, but mainly sad. I got a phone call last night from a young man who I'm sponsoring for confirmation this week. And he was a little upset because he'd been watching the news and he just didn't know what to make of it. And he was just really saddened by it all. And I said, look, man, you know, just kind of let me be the priest here right in this moment. This is what tomorrow, as in today, Pentecost is all about. You've got to let the Holy Spirit kind of calm you down. You've got to talk, take a breath, stop for a minute, take a deep breath. And just understand that these things happen, but God will take care of you and us. You got to breathe in and breathe out and move on, as the words of that Jimmy Buffett song go. But it's been an obviously challenging week, not only for all of us personally in our own lives with the things going on that we don't know about, but in a world and in our country as well. So we bring all of that to prayer. But, you know, before I even knew the demonstrating was going on, I checked my Facebook page earlier in the week. And a friend of mine had posted a photograph of Dr. King and a quotation from him that I had never heard or read anywhere before, and it really moved me. The quotation was, In the end, we will not remember the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. So I'm going to tell you straight up that those words really struck me and stopped me. The words in the gospel today, locked door, strike me as well. And let me tell you why. We come upon a scene in the gospel with which we're all familiar. The disciples are behind a locked door. They're huddled up. They're hiding for fear for their lives. Now, to be sure, the fear was real. It was a legitimate fear. They literally were in fear of losing their lives for being disciples of Jesus Christ. And so they're locked behind the door out of fear, and that's keeping them from doing what Jesus said. I also send you. It was keeping them from going forth and doing what they were sent to do. And so in the middle of all that fear and that confusion, Jesus appears, and he does two things for them. He entrusts to them, first of all, the ministry of forgiveness, whose sins you, are for, you forgive are forgiven. But more importantly, he promises them and he gives them. He breathes on them and he gives them the gift that will give them everything they need. Whenever they need wisdom or strength or courage, he gives them that gift and it's the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me tell you why this really strikes me. Because I don't know about you, but I don't want to be remembered as, quote, having been silent about my faith to use the words of Dr. King. And I know that you don't want to be remembered that way either. But sometimes it's very easy for any of us to lock ourselves in behind certain doors. Now, let me explain what I mean by that. Sometimes it's a security place, a comfortable place where we stay, because even though we know that God may be calling us to do a certain thing, we may not be comfortable doing it, or it may be too big of a risk for us to take, even though we may be called to take it. For example, let me share this with you about myself and see if you can connect with this. As a priest, and any priest or deacon will tell you this, there are some situations that I find it easy to be in and some that are uncomfortable. Now, for some people, that might be the hospital or being with someone who is dying or someone who is so hurting so badly that you don't know what to say to them. But the bottom line is there are some situations that are easier to be in than others. There are also some conversations that I find are easier to have and some that are very hard to have. Conversations that you lose sleep over the night before you have to have them. And yes, I'll also state the other obvious thing. 
There are people in life who are easier to be around, easier to talk to, and so on. You know it, I know it, I have those people in my life, and you do. And who knows, we're probably difficult for some people. However, I know what I am called to do. I think of the adage, Jesus came to comfort the disturbed and to disturb the comfortable. Sometimes that what needs, that's what needs to happen to us. I am, and all of us are, called to allow the Holy Spirit to move us from behind the locked doors of whatever it may be that keeps us from going out and bringing the word. Selfishness, laziness, complacency, anger, hurt, prejudice, fear, you name it. Anything that keeps you and me from going out from the place where we're comfortable and doing what we are sent to do. I find it very sobering when Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. The part where he says, I send you. Wow. I mean, that, that's the responsibility that we all have. A couple of years ago, um, there was an older lady who worked here with us, Father Mike Collins, who passed a few years ago. He and I were living together. And this lady was our housekeeper. Her name was Liz. Liz was just a wonderful lady with a great sense of humor. But the most admirable thing about Liz was... She had a deep and genuine faith, and she was visible about her faith in all the right ways. And I'll never forget the first time she said this, but often when I would leave the house to go for mass or to go for a funeral or just to go to a coffee shop to work on my homily, she would always say the same thing to me. She'd say, bring the word, Father Trey, bring word. And one day I was just kind of joking around with Liz because I was pretty tired, and she had said, bring the word. And I looked at her and said, Liz, I'm tired. What if I don't want to bring the word today? <laughs> and she laughed and she said, well, you got to do it anyway. You got to do it anyway. I look back on that and I think, you know, truer words were never spoken. There's a song that we sing in church sometimes. Part of the refrain goes, take the word of God with you as you go. I would suggest that the challenge contained in those words is not just for when we leave church on Sundays. In fact, I would suggest that it's not primarily about that. Tomorrow morning, all of us are going to get up and go somewhere. Some will go to work. Some will go to work in their office or store or wherever. And some will walk to a desk or a table in their house, open up their laptop and work there. If school was in session, some would go to class. Some of us will get up tomorrow, especially our children maybe, and walk into the living room with family or go later in the day to play with friends or maybe go to the store or wherever. Will we take the word, bring the word with us wherever we go? Let the Holy Spirit then, the same spirit that will change these humble gifts of bread and wine into the real presence of Jesus Christ, let that same spirit help you and I to unlock whatever doors we need to open so that we can go forth and do whatever God has sent us to do, wherever God sends us to do it. From St. Jude the Apostle Catholic Church in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, this is Father Trey Nelson, and this has just been my simple take, my homily for Pentecost Sunday, 2020. Peace be with you. Pray for the sick and for those who care for the sick. Have a great week.